Today, this is going to be an introduction covering how to use Makefile Auto Tool and CMake to do our embedded Linux build. So, I'm assuming you already know what a Makefile is. That would be a very simple example. So, we are setting the compilation flags and so on, right? Now, to cross-compile certain packages using Makefile, you might just need to set the cross-compile variable, like that. Okay? You might also be required to set the ARC variable to target a specific architecture among the available ones. Auto tools. This is a collection of tools that are used to build systems. What do we have? So we have autoconf, which generates the configure scripts that creates the OS system and generates makefile and other files from templates. Automake generates makefile.in templates from makefile.am templates, allowing programmers to write makefile in an higher level language. Libtool is a tool used for creating portable compiled libraries. Nulib subroutines usable on many operating systems. Now, the main aim of AutoTools is providing users with standardized build procedures. Learning a single tool that is able to compile packages using different versions of compilers while loading different header files and different versions of libraries. Usually, to configure, build and install, you will type the following. Apart from install, the following are also standard makefile targets, all check, clean and so on. The following variables customize the build. So as you can see, some variables affect the compiler behavior, some others the preprocessor and some others the linker and the libraries. The following is an example of cross-compilation obtained by overriding host, which is also the easiest way to obtain a cross-compilation, just by overriding host. Now, also, the installation directory was changed to slash usr, using prefix, so that libraries and other files are grabbed from sysroot slash usr slash libs and so on. Now, I'm using a variable my host, you can call it wherever you want, as long as the um, value of this variable matches the system, right? Okay. Now, analyze packages configuration by viewing the .pc file used for tracking packages installations. So, in these cases, we are analyzing the expat.pc, which belongs to the expat application. So, each application is going to have application name.pc file, which is a text file. And as you can see, in fact, I'm using cat to open it. And I'm grabbing all the information that I need, libs, C flags, and so on. You can also read configurations using PCK config, set in the configuration directory using pkg underscore config underscore libdir. Right? So I'm setting my Xtools on and then I'm exporting 
the pkg underscore config libdir. And finally, I'm running the pck config. And the output is going to be exactly the same that we got for the previous step. Right? Auto tools depends on burn shell, therefore it's slow. Depends on make. Backward and forward compatibility depend on a wrapper script. Generated scripts are generally very complex and large. Depends on M4, which is unknown to many developers. Certain packages come with their own configuration build scripts, which AutoTools may not understand. CMake CMake does not depend on Make and the Unix shell. Therefore, it is able to run on Windows 2. In fact, it's designed to work with native build environments. Very simple configuration file called cmakelist.txt are stored into each project, subdirectory or directory, and they are used to produce build files. CMake can interact with Microsoft Visual Studio, Xcode, Eclipse, MS Build, Make and many more. Example of CMakeList.txt So, you are setting the minimum required version for the tool you set the project name, you add your executable, C file and so on, and you set the installation directory. CPAC is the packaging system fully integrated with CMake, although it can work by itself. CPAC can create the following types of archives, deb, rpm, gzip, and so on. CMake usually can be used this way, right? very similar to auto tool and make issues with cross compiling configuration scripts might use information retrieved by pkg config disregarding the host override Some scripts might try to run cross-compile code, therefore they will fail. Target machine floating point format might be incompatible or by ordering might be different. Some programs might not work in a cross-compile environment. At the moment, MIPS-T file cannot be cross-compiled. I hope you've enjoyed my class. Thank you very much.